Hey guys, Kevin here.、Uh, I just came back from the movie Men in Black International, and I thought I'd just、uh, record this very initial impression and talk about how I feel about it.、Uh, well, you you guys can see it, but I put on this Canadian shirt,、uh, not because I'm in Canada or anything, but just just a sort of a congratulations to Toronto Raptors for winning the NBA championship. Well done, and. Yeah, let's go back to talk about actually talking about the movie. So, Main Black, Main in Black International. That is the fourth entry in the Main in Black franchise, and it's the first one that stars a brand new cast with a new director, F. Gary Gray, who directed movies like、uh, The Fate of the Furious. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at Wikipedia right now. I think he also directed Yes,、yeah, Straight Outta Compton. That was a pretty great movie. So instead of Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, which is the familiar duo from the first three movies, we have Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. And basically, the joke just writes itself. And this is the duo we got from、uh, Thor Ragnarok, and with some brief reunions in Avengers: Endgame, but not that many.、Uh, so if you've seen Thor Ragnarok, you know these two have incredible chemistry between each other, and We kind of wanted a、uh, Thor and Valkyrie movie. This this is probably the one you're gonna get. So briefly talking about the first three movies in the series, I、uh, really loved the first Men in Black back in 1997. That was one of the classic sci-fi comedies of its time, and it still holds up really well. The sequels are not as good as the first one, but I still found them very fun and just relaxed. Look, Men in Black is not that kind of movie that I take very seriously. I never really get too critical with it. Like the time travel mechanic of Men in Black Three, I really don't get hang on on the、uh, time travel loopholes or the logic issues. There, these are really just the movies I、uh, hang back and relax. So I don't really have that much of a high requirement of them. So. Well, when I went in to watch Main Black International, my expectations are, let's just say, kept in check because currently the movie has what is it, a 25% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, Rotten Tomatoes, this this is not this is not something that you should take too seriously either. So let's just leave it at that. But it's safe to say that the critics aren't liking it, and I think I.、Uh, Overall, I think I had a reasonably good time.、Uh, from the perspective of a、uh, 25% movie, it exceeded my expectation on that level. Although that is a really low ground to jump off. So in Men in Black International, we、uh, follow this、uh, Tessa Thompson's character called Molly. She witnessed an alien encounter when she was just a little girl, and the、uh, Men in Black. Agents that visited her home erased her parents' memories, but、uh, left her alone. But they just didn't find out about her. So she grew up knowing about this secret organization dealing with aliens, and of course the existence of aliens. And she、uh, she has been striving to become an agent of this agency. <laughs> I'm just repeating myself. And yes, this movie serves as an origin story to her character, and that part is really entertaining. She finds out about the、uh, main black headquarters all on her own. I'm not going to spoil the whole movie. This is just the premise, and you pretty much get this part of the story in the trailers anyway. And so she、uh, gets recruited in Main Black by Agent O, which is a recurring character from Main Black Three, played by Emma Thompson, and she was very entertaining. I'm just gonna lay it out there. If you're a huge fan of the first three Men in Black movies, there aren't going to be a lot of connection to the events of the、uh, those movies, and you're not gonna see Agent J and Agent K anywhere.、Uh, but there are enough familiar elements to convince you that this indeed is taking place in the same continuity. So Molly's recruited on a probation basis, basically means that she doesn't have a new rate. New Raider, new well, what is it called? Men in Black Memory Razor. What what is what is it called? Neuralizer. She's dispatched to the London branch of Men in Black, where she meets Chris Hemsworth's character, Agent H, who is a star agent. 
And Chris Hemsworth is his usual charming, funny self, and he's the hero of the agency. He saved the world previously, and they team up to、uh, go on an adventure, and they discover this conspiracy al- concerning aliens that could threaten the existence of all life on Earth. Yada yada yada. You know the drill. This is what happens every time Earth is in danger. Men in black in the move. Our protagonists. Uh, our heroes, they 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 overcome all sorts of obstacles and they solve the, the they solve the problems and they eventually save everybody. Yay, Team Earth!、Uh, let's just get to my first problem with this story. Is I like the introduction of、uh, Tessa Thompson's character, but this whole perspective of being her origin story has little to nothing to do with the overall plot of. Of the alien conspiracy that we're going to be following for the rest of the movie, and I mean you can kind of say that about the first Men in Black. I mean Agent J, Will Smith's character, being inducted into the into Men in Black and、uh, finding out all sorts of things about this institution, that doesn't really have a lot to do with the bug problem that he and Tommy Lee Jones had to deal with. Speaking of Tommy Lee Jones, I'm just assuming that he's somewhere lost in space and.、Uh, Brad Pitt has to go find him. Sounds pretty legit. They could make a movie about that. That was Men in Black One, like the first movie in the franchise. You kind, if you don't need the、uh, introduction for narrative purposes, you still need that for to establish your lore and the world building. And it was, it was done so entertainingly. Nobody really cares. Maybe I I don't know if it's just because the overall plot is not as engaging as the first movie, or is it because I have grown more cynical and critical over the years? But I find it really distracting that the, her character Molly, the, the fact that she is a new agent, the fact that she's a, an agent on probation, really doesn't get get to play a lot in the story. I mean, her being on probation is basically forgotten throughout the whole thing. For the most part, she has the、uh, required skill set and knowledge you would expect from a, a, an experienced agent. Actually, she's、uh, <laughs> she seems a lot more capable than Agent H, who is supposed to be this star agent. But but there's a narrative purpose to it. Agent H, Hemsworth's character, is supposed to be this、uh, star agent that has. Fallen off the grace a little bit. If you're into this movie, looking for a great team up story between Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth, you're gonna get that. They 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 are adorable together, just like they were in Thor Ragnarok. I mean, they were the chemistry was better in Thor Ragnarok than this movie, but basically because they were both playing vastly better written characters, and that leads to another problem I have with this movie is the writing. It's Uh, the uh, the humor, which is a traditionally speaking a very big part of the main black brand, is very on and off in this movie compared to the previous entries, and I would say maybe more often off than on, which is unfortunate. I, but I mean that's just my personal experience.、If、humor is such a subjective subject matter. I'm sure everybody will be、uh, co- coming to their own respective conclusions. Uh, but just speaking from my own experience, the only time my theater laughed out loud collectively is a scene that you see in the trailer. I won't just I won't elaborate into that scene, but it has a reference to another movie, another popular movie, and people obviously get that joke. But that's the only time everybody really laughed.、Uh, but don't get me wrong that. The movie is charming. It's entertaining, at, le- at least mildly speaking. But it lacks. What it sorely lacks above anything else are highlights. That's the conclusion I have arrived at. When you think back to the previous Men in Black movies, even even if you didn't like Men in Black two or three, I personally did enjoy them, but they were flawed nonetheless. You can always pick like a few moments that you, that were really memorable. I don't think you're gonna get a lot of that in this movie. I, I just came home from the theater and I think I've forgotten the whole chunk of the movie already. Just my feeling about the movie throughout the whole experience. Like the first, during the first act, I was really entertained. I thought this is quite awesome. What are the critics thinking? I mean, what could go so abhorrently wrong from here on that it warrants the 
critical lambasting that it's getting. And in the middle section, I kind of got that feeling because <laughs> this, the middle part is quite boring and there's just nothing special about it. I, I think they made some interesting choices in the third act that kind of salvaged the experience. So overall, I think I had a good time. <laughs> With with the understanding that I came in with extremely low standards and expectations, of course. But as I said, like f f with problems like uh, Molly's origin story being so disconnected to the overall plot, and a bunch of uh, writing issues, and that's plaguing the movie. I feel like this is a uh, more of a trend of blockbusters lately that have suffered from this issue. And I, I don't know why. I mean, I I know I didn't really record reviews for those movies but i've also seen godzilla king of the monsters and uh, x-men uh, x-men dark phoenix and i think though both of those movies are okay but suffering from extremely heavy script writing issues like the mo uh, the way i would describe them is that they feel like they just threw in the first draft and uh, they hired no script doctors and they did no rewrites they just straight up got the first draft and they got the actors in and uh, acted on them and then they uh, added a special effects and then post produced them and then they, they did package the movie and before you know what you got you packed it you sold it and you I don't remember the lines but you get a reference so it's just that lately we got a string of movies like that. It reminds me of uh, a, whole, a, a whole decade before, 2000, around the year 2009, when we got a whole bunch of blockbusters with really dashing special effects but lackluster scripts. But movies that came out in 2009, a lot of them suffered from the uh, 2007 to 2008 writer's strike of Hollywood. So there's at least an excuse for that. As far as I know, there's no such event going on in Hollywood right now or a few years back. So I guess it's just the timing. They just all of them came came in around this time of year. On that regard, I do think Main Black International is a little bit better than the, the other two movies that I have referred to. Yeah, the writing is not a stellar, but at least I don't think it's terrible. I think it's mildly interesting and passable. If you are a big fan of many black series, uh, maybe you have a higher standard about this whole thing than I am, and I think you may be disappointed. But the biggest disappointment for me personally, I don't know if it's a fair request for the movie at all. But I find it really lacking in its ambition. I mean, this movie got a whole new cast. Uh, new director, uh, new faces on the posters. We got a new dynamic between Hemsworth and uh, Tessa Thompson. So you did this a whole overhaul on the franchise only to just make another main black movie. It feels very generic, very in the same line of the previous films. It's always a little bit frustrating when they reboot or at least a soft reboot is serious and do nothing really interesting creatively speaking about them by the way Liam Neeson is in this movie and yeah Liam Neeson is in this movie that's all I can say he's playing Liam Neeson uh, one highlight of the movie is uh, Kumail Nanjiani am I, am I pronouncing this right Kumail Nanjiani yeah that's the guy He's the guy from The Big Sick, which, which was really good, and he's uh, he's a really he's one of the funniest actors working today, I think, and I really like his role. He plays the well, the little cute one, and basically he plays the merch, and I think he did his job very well, and his character may be the most entertaining one. I've heard a lot of criticism about the villains of this movie, about how they are very bland; they're just a CGI heavy. Th beings with superpowers without any personality whatsoever that is true however i would i would say they're a little bit they're not bad villains they're just underplayed i actually think the movie could use a lot whole lot of more of them without revealing too much i mean i really can't describe them very well they're very hard to describe basically it's a they're twins and they have these very ambiguous 
power sets but are really cool on screen i think visually speaking they are the most ambitious aspect of this movie and whenever they are on screen they they do possess a palpable threat to the protagonist and they do look cool doing it i think at the end of the day they are going to be one of the more memorable parts of the movie so strictly speaking main black international is just passable it's it's definitely watchable and i think most people can have a reasonably good time with them uh, there's just it's just nothing special that's maybe that some people would consider that the biggest crime of them all they would some people would rather watch a horrible movie just for the entertaining factor of watching a bad movie maybe just on the off chance that it's so bad it's good uh, but a mediocre one those are prob some people might uh, with good reasons consider them to be more of a waste of time than utterly horrible trashes and this movie is not that it's not great it's not bad it's just okay <laughs> Again, it brings to the point that why are you bothering making such drastic changes to a franchise just to make an okay movie? I mean, nobody sets out to make an okay movie. Nobody sets out to make a bad movie. Everybody tries their damned hardest to make good, but it, it's really hard to make a good movie. Uh, so, many par uh, so many pieces of the puzzle have to fall exactly into place uh, for a movie to turn out actually good. And for the most part, you don't really know how good your movie is until it's like at least middle, uh, uh, heavily in post-production because that's when you get to see the edited footage and then you get, uh, get a little bit of a framework of what the movie is going to look and sound like. And I'm not sure if I, this is a movie that I can recommend, recommend that you go, to be honest with you. I mean, but I had a okay time so my my suggestion is just to go in with the right amount of expectation just know that this movie is critically failing all over the place but if you if this is something you're interested in the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes currently is at a 71% so yet again we have a movie where the critics and audiences aren't exactly seeing eye to eye so chances are you're an audience so there's a there's an okay chance that you might enjoy it. So there you go, Men in Black International. So thank you for watching this. Thank you for indulging me. I just just every time I watch a movie, I have a lot of things to get off my chest. It feels good to be able to have a platform to talk about them. So if you if you're expecting more of this, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think of Men in Black International. Do you have any interest in it? Uh, how do you think about this review? Do you think there's there's there are any ways to improve it? Uh, I mean, obviously there are. Just letting you know, I'm uh, I'm planning to film these initial impressions, not as not exact as its own separate scene, not really as official reviews. I have planned more dedicated review videos uh, for this channel, and the first one of them is going is on its way, and it's going to be about uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. So look forward to that. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel anyway. So see you next time I see you. Have a good one.